this was the entrance to the Caterpillar tractor factory. But before that was the site of where the local doctor's bungalow stood. Another minute takes us to Helen Kerr's drapery shop and post office. Helen and her husband started their business by going around the doors selling drapery items from a case. Next door was a chemist, but only the later residents got the use of it. It was a converted house and wasn't in use for long. The cafe we see here was, up till shortly before the war, owned by a couple called Johnny and Cathy McNanny. It was then taken over by Louis and Della Bratisani and came to be known as Della's. Next door was another fish and chip shop owned by a Mrs. Patterson. That was all that lady sold. Adjacent to that came the cooperative baker's shop, although shown here as a library. The original library was in the miners' welfare until after the war. The local hostelry. Officially named the Alexandra, but that name was scarcely ever used. It was more often called Kilmartins, after the proprietor, or the brushers. Brushers were men who carried out a specific job down the pit. All these premises were directly across the road from the present miners' welfare. We will dip through the pen close here. From an upstairs vantage point, we see to our left the Nackerty Pit Bing. Below is a wash house. Switching our gaze to the right, we observe the gas tank and Tanner side number three pit bing. In the foreground, we also notice the west stretch of Hosier Street, which was known as the Gas Row, had already been demolished. A close-up view of the pit bing and brickworks chimney. A start has been made in clearing this bing. Some of the waste was used to fill in the pit shaft, the remainder for making roads. Back through to Old Edinburgh Road. Here's a photo of the pub taken in 1917. But six yards beyond the pub is the pit manager's house. A further five or six yards takes us to the start of Russell Place. The first of the commercial premises here was a chemist. In pre-war days, the older tech chemists made up their own medicines as per a doctor's prescription. This was such a one. Later on, it became a doctor's surgery. One of the doctors to use it was a very popular Dr. Angela Crawford. 
Adjoining that are two shops. The first was a Swedish shop owned by a Susie Kelly, with the back premises being used as a barber's. The barber's name was Willie Smiley, and an interesting thing about him was that on a Saturday, he employed a 12-year-old lad as a soap boy. His job was to soap the faces of the men waiting to be shaved. One of the last boys to do this was my older brother Robert. Sharing the same common interests was a busy general provision shop owned by a Mr. Arthur Kelly, no relation to Susie, who had it from the late 1930s until the demolition in 1955. Before him, Chamas had it as a newsagent. Turning left here, we enter the heart of the rose. Note the gas street lamp. This is Laidler Street. Even numbers on the left and odd numbers on the right. From about a quarter of the way down the street, looking north. Turning round to go back, we are now looking towards Uddingston. I was born in a house to the left, number 29 Laidlow Street. Now back out the continuation of Russell Place. No shops here, only the 16 houses. The Scobie family lived in the left-hand downstairs corner house, the Murphys, and the corresponding right-hand corner one. Hosier Street now comes into view. Number one Hosier Street, occupied by the McEwen family. The father, Rab, was well known as the caretaker of the miners' welfare. Right behind me here was number one Hosier Street, the entrance to Tannerside Rose. Over my right shoulder, Centurion Brick Company, that was the site of the very heart of Tannerside Rose. Tannerside began its life during the coal mining boom in the latter part of the 19th century. The houses were built in a rectangle with Hosier Street, which was built in 1870, forming three sides of it. Two rows of Laidler Street were then built in the centre in 1890. 